safe, cheap $10 fairy wings. Uh, see the more info below for free patterns and other information. So I'm going to show you how to make fairy wings that look and move naturally, are very light, very cheap to make, and are very sturdy. Yeah. Unlike wireframe wings, these don't pose a risk of stabbing someone at a party. Uh, you can make a pair of these from start to finish, including back mount in about an hour. They're really great for children and, again, parties where you can't stab people. Uh, supply list, uh, this is pretty simple. All of the optional supplies are discussed later on. You can get a copy of this in the more info section. What I will talk about is the pen knives that I tried to use when I'm cutting this. I bought a Fisker's brand papercraft cutting knife from Michael's Craft Store and a no brand mystery hobby blade from Harper Freight Tools. The tool store knife had really thin blades and they cut really quickly and easily. They offered very little control but they didn't really dull quickly and they were excellent for making fast cuts. Easy to mess up but I could cut a whole wing in five minutes. The Fisker's knife was very precise but took a lot of hand strength to force the thick blade through the paper. It dulled very quickly and was very slow. The wing came out perfect but my hand ached for about two days after using the Fisker's knife. So when you're choosing uh, the tools for this, think about it. Make active choices. Alright, design. In the more info section I have a sample template you can print out and try out for the mini wings I demo in this video. Uh, my favorite sources for wing venation slash neuralation, old school naturalist books. For butterflies, dragonflies, wasps, bees, try using these four entomological classics linked to in the description. The drawings are out of copyright, so you can do whatever you want with them. A Holland's Butterfly Book, really great source for most round wing shapes. The Butterflies of the Eastern United States and Canada, I love for swallowtails. Tilliard's The Biology of Dragonflies has very simplified uh, dragonfly wing drawings so that you can make a nice looking dragonfly wing without a whole lot of, well, trouble. And Snodgrass's The Anatomy of the Hummingbee. To this day, Snodgrass remains the world's best insect anatomist. Have reverence as you page through his honeybee book. Alright, so when you're looking at your design and you're deciding how to do it, if you alter nature's designs, you want your wings to look fanciful but still have this sense of reality. So here's some tips. When you look at your wings, the shape should be conceivably be able to move air for flying. Like, this wing was caused by a mutant gene and will lead to the fairy starving to death when it can't efficiently flutter about for morning dew and sunbeams. Um, the support structure of the wing. The veins should make sense for the weight of the wing when flying and flapping. Those different cells and sections bend the wing to move air effectively. They're not just decorative. Uh, versus, say, making it up with squiggles that don't look like it has anything to do with flying. Um, the tubes that allow for that natural flex to help direct air... When you've got a wearer moving around, the wings should move naturally. They should bend and flex in a way that looks real, as opposed to waving like a flag or being totally stiff. Um, as a note, during the design process, you'll have to choose how to mount your wings to your wearer. It's less interesting, so I talk about it at the end, but consider it during your design planning. You um, may want to make each pair of wings a single piece for easier mounting. Just consider it. So, laminate construction. One piece of poster board is really, really floppy, but several pieces layered together is stiff. Here you can see how even a small piece of laminated poster board is tough like cardboard. To layer the poster board, go outside and lay down newspaper. Spray a piece of poster board all over with spray glue, including the edges. Spray a heavy layer of glue so the poster board looks wet. Wait a few moments after spraying so the glue goes from wet to very sticky. This will make the glue dry faster so you can go right into cutting without having to wait for it to dry. Lay another piece of poster board on top, so on and so forth. This does not have to be perfect. When you lay it down is more important than how. It's okay if the edges don't match up. So do this until you have at least three pieces. You can make the laminate more thick, but then you need to use a power tool like a saw, like a separating blade bandsaw. Unless you are the world's beefiest fairy maker, it will be too hard to force a pen knife through the more than three layers of poster board. On regular computer paper, print or draw out the design you want to use. Place the design over the laminated poster board. You can also very lightly spray glue or um, glue stick the design in place, or even tape. Use a pencil or pen to draw over the design firmly. Um, at this point, you can choose to have an outline of the wing for added stiffness, or no outline for a realistic bending wing. The bigger the wing, the more veins you'll need to make it stiff. So just if you're going to make like a four-foot-tall pair of wings this way, consider having a lot of veins and connecting structures in there to add, make it stiffer. Um, so remove your printed design or your drawing to show the embossed lines you'll cut along. Um, practice first. This part should only take a few minutes using a thinner knife blade. Uh, if the knife you're using is the wrong one for the job, stop and get a different one or else you're going to spend days hating this project. Any rough edges can be cleaned with the pen knife. So here's a finished wing per fame compared to the template, which was printed in draft mode on my computer to save ink. Yeah, that's why it's great. Anyway, so the cellophane. 
Many tutorials insist you use shrink wrap cellophane, which will become tight around a wire frame. The paper frame bends, so you can't use the shrink wrap or the wing will curl up and look really weird. If you use colored cellophane, check which side the color is painted on. Many colored cellophanes have only a thin layer of color on one side. Use a permanent marker or a Q-tip with rubbing alcohol to test and dissolve the ink. The, ink. the side that melts color away is the side you glue to the frame. Painting cellophane. Using craft store paints on cellophane can only create dark areas you can't see through. What looks like really pretty color on your table will look dark and gross when you hold it up to the light. But that can look good if you use it strategically. If you use a dry brush technique where you use dry, sticky paint, you can um, blend to create a very smooth edge of color so you have these fading dark to light areas. If you do want color that's going to let light through, you'll have to use transparent inks to color the cellophane. The most common one are Sharpie markers. Sharpie markers have transparent ink. If your cellophane has color on one side, you can draw normally on the outside of the Sharpie marker, and then you can use the Sharpie to melt away and blend color on the inside. Using a solvent, like rubbing alcohol, to melt away the color can produce a really beautiful detail, in this case swirls or scales. Spray paints will melt the cellophane a little and cause it to wrinkle, as you see here with the spray glitter. So, to attach the cellophane, hold your laminate frame outside and coat both sides with spray glue. Don't add paint or big chunky glitter to the frame, um, because layers of stuff on the paper frame will prevent the cellophane from sticking. Bring the frame inside and lay it down on the first layer of cellophane. If you want to insert any glitter or other effects into the cells of the wing, do it now. Then, lay another sheet of cellophane on top. Even though you're not using shrink wrap cellophane, ironing it smooth will make it really pretty because it'll hug the frame nicely. Uh, notice that the thin cellophane becomes perfectly smooth in this example, but this thicker pearlescent cellophane doesn't play along as nicely. Uh, you'll have to experiment as you go with different materials. So use a very low setting on your iron and test this first. If you put the colored layer facing out, it will stick to your iron and get wrecked. See how the wrong side of the cellophane sticks and stains when hot? Just right, the cellophane will be smooth, but if too hot, it'll shrivel. So here's cellophane that's been overheated. If too overheated, it'll melt to your iron. You may need to put a layer of tissue paper between the iron and your wing if your cellophane is very delicate or melty. When you iron, just don't overdo it. Iron a couple times on each side. If you iron only one side and not the other, the wing will curl because one side gets tight and the other doesn't, so it just curls up. Um, so once the cellophane is smooth on both sides, you can go back in and use the tip of your iron to make nice sharp edges. Again, do this on both sides to avoid warping and curling your wing. Ironing must be done on a smooth surface. Here you can see that by ironing over a cutting board, the cuts in the cutting board became embossed into the cellophane. Now this could be really cool to make textures by ironing over stamps or texture sheets you can make or buy, but it looks really bad when it's an accident. So trimming up the wing. So after your wing is glued and ironed, hold it up to your original drawing and cut the cellophane to match. Along the poster board um, laminate that also has cellophane on it, use sharp scissors to cut off the cellophane and a thin piece of poster board for a really clean looking edge. If you want an aged look, you can use a pen knife and cut out windows into your cellophane, which is quite pretty. Uh, just don't make them too huge or it's going to get really floppy and lose all the tension on it. So for the back mount, there are tons of tutorials out there you can use for making fairy wing back mounts. You can sew the wings into garments, you can insert them into slots and glue um, slotted mounting blocks to the garment. You can glue the wings onto elastic loops and wear them over the shoulders. But I'm going to share you with me my favorite. Uh, unfold a wire hanger and make it into a loop. Twist that loop a couple times with pliers so it'll hold its shape and be locked out closed. Then snip off the extra metal with heavy duty snips or garden shears. Bend the extending two wire pieces to match your wing. Use hot glue or um, epoxy glue that's thick and starting to cure so it won't run everywhere and glue the wire to the top of the wing. The glue, because it's thick, will hide the rough cuts you made. Now paint the top to match. Have your wearer put on several wraps of athletic bandage or sturdy bra. Now cut a slit in the shirt for your costume. Slip the wire loop under the chest strap and pin the slit closed. Uh, the end. Ben. Hey, Ben. 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 What? I've got fairy wings for you to wear for a video. I'm not doing fairy wings. What? What are you... Why not? Because I refuse to do anything on camera that makes me look less masculine. What the hell? This is Bianca. Isn't she adorable? <laughs>